I've seen you say that you certainly live your life as though God exists. Yes, I would say, well, to the best of my ability. Hmm. Right, yeah. And I think that that's the fundamental hallmark of belief is what you, it's how you act, not right. what you say about what you think you think. Sure. What do you know about what you think? Mm. Seriously, I mean, mm. we wouldn't need a psychology, yeah, yeah. an anthropology, a sociology, <laughs> any of this, any of the humanities, if if our thoughts were transparent to ourselves. They're not in the least. And you've well, been in the least they are. But you've been willing to be quite critical as well of some of the new atheists. So Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett, Richard Dawkins. Um, what what have you made of their particular way of approaching? Oh, they religion? just don't take it seriously enough. They are, as far as I'm concerned, they they don't contend with the real thinkers. They oh, I know all three of them very well. <laughs> and I have deep, uh, great arguments with them, and they seem to be taking it seriously. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Uh, the, there's a certain sort of superficiality in the writings of all of them. But as people, I find they, well, they really care about oh, these issues. Oh, they care. Yeah. Oh, they care. There's no doubt about that. And and, and it's not like I'm, I'm uh, not sympathetic to the atheist or rationalist claim. I'm perfectly sympathetic to it, but I don't believe that the level of discussion that's characteristic of Dawkins and Dennett and and Sam Harris, say, approaches the level of complexity of, say, Friedrich Nietzsche or Dostoevsky. Well, that would so, be asking quite Carl a lot, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> but if you're going to play in that arena, <laughs> yeah, okay. man, you're going to play with yeah, the heavyweights. Yeah, yeah. But what I've so, noticed is it's a lot of people who may be up to a point have been interested in what those people have been saying from the new atheist side who are also interested in what you're saying there's an interesting sort of correlation there yeah definitely and and why is it that especially some of these you know potentially i see a lot of men in this audience mm -hmm. are, are coming to you jordan to to sort of sit at your feet and, and hear what you have to say at this point well the new atheists have a hell of a hell of a uh, time with an act of ethic you know, they say, well, you can build an ethic on rationality. It's like, well, first of all, that's not self-evident. It's possible, but it's by no means self-evident. And and their, their, their essential existential concept is rather hollow. Like with Harris, for example, mm. um, we never, when I, I talked to him twice on two different podcasts, and we never really got to his sense of what the ideal society might be. But I've read his writings on, on the maximization of well-being, for example, and it's just, it's just, that's just not going anywhere. You can't even measure it properly. And if you're thinking about something mm. like that scientifically, that's, that turns out to be like, that's not a problem. It's a catastrophic problem. But so, Sam really goes deeply into the consequences of meditation and he tells stories about his own experience of how behavior changes. Compassion seems to arise naturally. This is not based on rationality, which is not everything. And I, mm -hmm. I would agree with you there. It's based on practical experience, training in observing one's own thoughts, which is also of interest to you. And in the way behavior changes in ways which he would say, and also query whether it's true, that it's better behavior. Well, that being compassionate mm -hmm. and kind to people is better. We can't have some great underlying reason why. If you don't have God, you know, it's a very, very difficult question. You, you've got to find some basis. But even without one, Sam is trying to say, as I would, that if you spend a lot of time meditating and really becoming to understand yourself and see the consequences of certain thoughts and actions, then better actions follow. I, I, that's one of the things I like yeah, about his work. I, well, and, and I'm, I'm certainly not questioning his, questioning his ethical integrity or his commitment to these problems. Um, although I certainly don't think that compassion or kindness constitutes a sufficient grounds for a, like a transcendent e transcendent ethic. Not not in the no. least. Partly because both, and I'm sp I can speak about that technically to some degree. Compassion is associated with trait agreeableness fundamentally, mm -hmm. and agree and agreeableness is a great short term strategy for infants. <laughs> But it's a very bad lo medium to long-term strategy for adults, and it's by no means a, a, the ground upon which an entire complex society can rest. And that's partly what you see playing out right now in the political world, because the politically correct types are very high in compassion. We have research that demonstrates that. And so, and there, but that ethic doesn't work for a sophisticated society. We were only doing introductions. We're already yeah. well, well into <laughs> yes. the. Uh, it's my fault. 